you with a bundle this time, huh? Yes. How much we play for? A dollar a point? Mm, that is about right. Mm -hmm. You know, Marco, you play that very well. I don't want to believe what I'm hearing. You've become a good loser. Oh, I just enjoy some very good competition once in a while, that's all. All right, your turn to deal. Talking about Karen, Dorian? Please. I am very bored with her. Then throw her out. I have tried to tell her as nicely as possible that she is overstaying her welcome. She doesn't get the point. I told you you're not going to get through to her unless you hit her over the head. Come on, she's not stupid, Marco. Dorian, she is when she wants to be. Now, she's found a home here, and she's not going to leave unless you throw her out. She'll stay here until the swallows return to Capistrano. All right, then. I'll settle this right now. When did she go upstairs? 15, 20 minutes ago. Okay, then. She can't be asleep. I will have a little talk with her. As a matter of fact, you see, my sister Melinda is coming home tomorrow, and I don't want Karen to be around when she arrives. Good point. Well, aren't you going to mind not seeing Karen? Why should I? Don't you that? Dorian, Karen and I did our thing a long, long time ago. And does she think it's over? Yeah. Now, you said yourself, sometimes she has to be hit over the head. Oh, now I see. The green-eyed monster is rearing back its head. Oh, come on, Marco, don't you flatter yourself. You know, Dorian, you and Karen have a lot in common. Really? I think we have some mighty big differences. Like? Well, like, she's not a very good gin player. And I'm a very wealthy woman. And you know what they say? No. What do they say? They say happiness is fine, but it can't buy money. Now, you be a real good boy, and don't you peek at my hand. I guess I, I just feel like 
since my father's a psychiatrist, I should know what to say. I saw your father today, and he didn't have any great words of wisdom. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I just meant I, I think I should know. Sam, this is something I've got to work out myself. I've got to find a way to accept it. And nobody can help me with that. Not even Pat? Especially not Pat. Oh, tell me, why not? She loves you. She... You know, she must be feeling exactly the same way as you feel right now. She let all this happen. Tony, you don't mean that. Sam, there are just some things you don't know about. So just trust me on this, all right? Okay. Okay. Brian used to... used to come here on his way home from school on his bike. And we'd sit downstairs at the bar playing chess. When it came time to open up, Brackley had to kick him to get him out of here. It was like we were... But that was a long time ago. That was before Kendall came back. I guess you were kind of... For a little while there, Brian's substitute father. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's about all I was, wasn't it? Great kid, Sam. I know. I know. Right on the right on the brink of growing up. All those wonderful, terrible discoveries. Guess you know about that though, because you must be going through the same thing. Yeah. I just never realized that well, that you and Brian were that close or, uh, that you loved him like that. Why? Sam, look, um, you really don't have to stick around. Well, what if I want to? Because I'm such good company. Come on. Let's get you out of here. Well, so what are you going to do? Go to bed. You really think you'll be able to sleep? Sleeping's one thing I can do very well. Then you're all right? Oh, I'm fine, Sam. Thanks. You're a good kid, too. You know, something I forgot all about the kitchen. I left it in this complete mess. Listen, it'll just take me a couple minutes to straighten up, and then I'll be out of here. Doesn't matter now anyway. How many times? 
times? How many times did I warn you that Brian was not emotionally ready to accept that? The fact that you gave in to Tony is... Don't, don't, don't blame Tony. All right. Have it your own way. Oh, my son is dead. And so is mine. Pat, you had no right. No right. Thank <laughs> you. 
So would you kindly pack your bags and get out? What? You heard me. Look, I, I didn't want to sound like a complaining guest this morning when you asked me. I, I had a very restless night. I, I just went to take a walk around the ground. Actually, I'm not interested. Karen, I was going to ask you to leave anyway when my sister, Melinda, arrived. Now, this little escapade just gave me the chance to do it with a clear conscience.
All right. All right, Vicky. I'll go over to her just as soon as I can. Can I tell her that you're coming by? Yes, of course. She'll be very pleased.
Sam. It's about how the town gets. Well, that's, um, it's Paul's mother. She lives in San Francisco. He, he called her and uh, she met Brian. Kendall's handling everything. Yes. I'm really very thankful for that, you know. I'm, I, I don't know what I would have done. I've been glad to make all the arrangements. I think that, given the circumstances, maybe it'd be more appropriate if I did. Why? Well, let's face it. Since the divorce, really no reason for Kendall to claim that he's Brian's father anymore. Is Johnny, there was no divorce. Paul and I are still married. Although I, I guess someone could have driven her to Columbus. 
I'll check both of them.
to talk to the police. Oh. Hmm? Ed said he'd call me if he found out anything new, but he didn't, so I came back. I have Abbott out digging. Where's Pat? She's upstairs. Sleep, I hope. She goes off a little while ago. If Kevin doesn't start crying, she might even sleep for a few hours. Let's hope she does. Joe, I'm so worried about her. I know, sweetheart. So am I. You don't even know what happened today. Oh, it wasn't enough that she lost a son. Neither Tony nor Paul will stand by her. They are both blaming her for Brian's death. And you think it's my fault, don't you, Kendall? It's like I think it's yours. Yes, I do. Now, what could have happened to her, Dorian? She was in no condition to go off by herself. Why would you insist that the sanitarium really? Well, I was perfectly confident that she could make her way from the sanitarium to the airport and then onto a plane. Marco, what do you think I should do? Should I call the police? Come on now, Doria. Don't get theatrical about this. She's only an hour late, you know. But she wasn't on that plane. So what? So she didn't come today. There are planes tomorrow. But she had no other place to go but here. Gosh, I don't need any of your smart remarks. I'm very upset. The only reason you're upset is because you have nothing else to do. Come on, Dorian, you're not thinking straight. There's no logic to all this stuff you're going through. I'm going to tell you this one more time. If my sister wasn't on that plane, that means something is wrong. I know it. And I know from vast personal experience that one can cash in an airplane check and it can be used for other things. Melinda, cash in an airplane ticket? No. No, and Dorian, it's not all that difficult, believe me. It would be for her. But she couldn't handle something like that. You make her sound like a three-year-old kid. In a lot of ways, that's exactly what she is. You have to tell her how to do things, how to exactly do them. Well, I hope you left her instructions on how to uh, walk up the ramp to board the airplane then. Oh, I don't need to discuss this with you any further. If all I'm going to get from my concern is all your sarcasm. Dorian, I'm just trying to see that your concerns are realistic. If left to your own devices, you're going to be climbing the walls here in a couple of seconds. All right, all right. If you're so much smarter than I am and so much more realistic, why don't you tell me where Melinda is? How do I know? I just know that there are some possibilities you're not willing to consider. Then find out where she is. Me? Yes, aren't you this big private detective these days? It's true. All right. But I'm hiring you to find Melinda. Oh, I don't think so. Nope. In the first place, I'm busy on another case. And in the second place, Dorian, you wouldn't help me out when I asked you when I needed it for my setup. You obviously have no faith in my abilities. That's absolutely right. You know, Marco, I don't think you could find your way out of a door, let alone find a missing person. On the contrary, door. Wait! Oh, Marco, please, don't walk out. Listen, I'm very serious. Really, I am about hiring you to find my sister. And I'm seriously turning it down, Dorian. Look, my hands are full right now. Well, I know Melinda's going to show up soon, okay? Good night. Marco, I... Do you really have to go right now? Yeah, Dorian, I really must get on this case. Can't you see I'm upset? Please don't leave me alone. Ring for a servant. Oh, you can go upstairs and help Karen back. That's right, Karen's here. Uh, and since Melinda's not back, maybe I don't want Karen to leave yet. <laughs> then help her unpack. Besides, I think you should get a look at her luggage before she splits. You know, I still go wearing things. I can't understand that. I mean, I can't. 
No, neither can I. I went to see Tony this afternoon. I practically had to beg him to come and visit Pat. When he finally agreed, I thought, well, good, we've effected some sort of a reconciliation. Apparently, just the opposite happened. No, we know Tony's hot-headed and stubborn. He'll get over this. He loves Pat. He'll get back together eventually. What's the matter? You think I'm being too optimistic? Sweetheart, it breaks my heart to say so, but yes, I think you are. Don't you think it's rather pointless to talk about it now? Yeah, I suppose so. It's not going to bring Biden back, is it? No, it isn't. I think things could have been handled differently, but... I'm sure there's a lot that all three of us would change if we could go back and do it all over again. Yep. Starting 13 years ago. What we have to do now is... learn how to live with the fact that Brian's gone. I, um, I want you to know that, I know that you're suffering as much as I am, and Pat is. Yeah, um, I have to have dinner with Edwina Lewis. By the way, Tony, did Pat tell you that I didn't get that divorce? Yes, that way you could uh, 
Keep an eye on what's going on across the street. Doing that, I don't know what you're talking about. Kathy! Kathy and Larry! You could see how many times he just happens to drop in over there. Uh, Dorian, you're, you're making much, much too big a deal out of it. They've been friends for years. When we saw them, they were just having dinner together, and, and why not? Well, from where I was sitting, it, it certainly looked a lot more intimate than that. And besides, just how great a step is it from friendship to lovers? And they are both very lonely people right now. Diana, I, I think I better go now. I, I'm going to go home right now. No, Karen, please wait. I mean, uh, Melinda will be here soon, and, and I would just love to introduce you to her. No, that's all right. That's a family reunion. You, you have that by yourself. I'll see you soon. She wouldn't do it. And I told her how important it was. What Becky thinks is important, Richard, is stay away from you and your charm. Huh. Underneath all that bravado and antagonism. <sighs> you know, she really is quite susceptible to you. You know, a lot of good it does me, Mrs. Hopkins. I don't know. You know, the first time she walked out of me, the second time she walked out of me, after the second time she walked out of me, I thought, the hell with it. <sighs> but then, that didn't last very long. But anyway, something happened this afternoon that could really be a big break for her. Oh, and because you still care, you came over here to try again. Yeah, you got it. By the way, did you find out anything about her background? Oh, no. I mean, she's even taken to saying, Miss Hopkins, I ain't gonna tell you nothing, so why do you keep on asking? <laughs> oh, terrific. We're really rolling along. Full speed ahead, Mrs. Hopkins. We sure are. Crashing into walls with more force and speed than ever. <laughs> You know, the thing is, though, if I don't find out what Becky's life was like before I met her, we don't have much of a chance. Because I don't know what I'm dealing with. Honey, I'm doing everything I can. I'm on your side, but... Yeah, but you think it's hopeless? Well, let's just say I'm not hopeful. Oh, this topic is depressing. Richard, you're not gonna quit now, are you? No, I can't. Never learned how.
Don't I look happy? Yeah, you seem to be. But then sometimes I catch you looking at me in a, in a way that scares me. Oh, well, when did I look at you that scared you? All right, like at the hotel, when I've been drinking too much, or if I've been gambling too long, or if you thought there was some woman that I was flirting with. Well, it's true. I, I guess I have looked at you that way. I have thought about those things. Well, you're just different. You're different from me. We're two different people, and I'm just not going to worry about those things. Anyway, we all have our faults. Yeah, name me one fault that you have. Oh, I have plenty. You're going to find out about them. Anyway, I didn't marry you because you were perfect. It's not as though you're not living up to my expectations. What do you mean I'm not perfect? Hey. Well... Hey. Well, of course I am. I can prove it. I got the perfect wife. You know, as beautiful as it was there, I'm really glad to be home. Yeah. Me too. I'll tell you, I started to get nervous about the health club. If you don't mind, I want to go over there and see it, check it out, see if everything's running all right. No, no, it's okay. You go right ahead. I want to find out what's happening for Anna anyway. Hey, I'm going to move out of here, get our own place. Oh, I don't know. There's no rush, is there? Well, yeah, there is as far as I'm concerned. Why? I don't like it. It's like living, I don't know, it's like living in a dollhouse or a fishbowl or something. What do you mean? Well, it is. I mean, we don't have, there's no privacy. We live right next door to the Craigs. We hear their voices through, right through the wall. They hear our voices right through the wall. Oh, come on. I never noticed that. That's true. Jacqueline? Hi. I heard your voices, so I knew you were back. <laughs> Listen, is Tony there? No, there's no answer in his apartment. You don't know where he is? Well, listen, are you expecting him later at least? Gee, Charlie, you're really a wealth of information. All right, well, all right, look, just, if, if you see him, tell him I called, okay? because you're my lovely daughter. And I've had a not-so-lovely day with a lot of not-so-lovely personalities, and I'm glad to see you. Well, I'm glad to see you, too. <laughs> Is anything I can get you? Oh, no, I don't think so, honey. Thanks. I think I just sit here and try to unwind. I'm so tired. Ooh. Any plans for tonight? No, nothing definite. Oh, good. It's been a nice, nice quiet evening at home, just the two of us. Talk. Your 
talking about anything. Uh, you're worried that little Sammy has a crush on Tony. No, come on now, just be realistic. We're, we're, we're good friends. It's impossible. He, he's in love with Pat. You don't have... Will you stop worrying? Uh, really?